I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate uh, Brassic tonight. We've got to start with you, Joe. It's your baby. Yeah. Where did you begin? How long had it been playing around in your head that you wanted to write something based on your experiences? Well, I was a bit, I've had a bit of a colourful past. I went off the bloody rails. I got up to all kinds of shit for many years. So I became like a bit of a career criminal, I guess you'd, you'd call it. And some of the jobs I did were just hysterical. So I had a lot of stories and I'd always play with them. And I embellish an awful lot. So slowly over time doing these different jobs, I would be embellishing these stories and the whole time I'd sort of gauge what worked from what didn't, you know. I came back home to my mate Quail and I was like, look, there's this whole thing, it's like this huge bipolar high of like, we're gonna fuck it, I've met people, Dominic West said he was good, I'm gonna write it down, Dave, and Dave's like, I'm a builder, I can't, I don't wanna help. I was like, no, it's not a bipolar thing, Dave, this is real, this is real stuff. So I pulled all the garden furniture in, we wrote on everything, we wrote on the walls, the tables, we run out of shit to write cardboard boxes, like, someone chucked a roll of fucking wallpaper, <laughs> wrote all over that, like, uh, lost our deposit, you know, got a TV show out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Every cloud. Danny, how did you come on board, and was it a daunting task to try and translate all this into a... No. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, I could see really clearly actually that the stories that Joe had and, and the ideas that he had for this show were, were, were brilliant and funny and, you know, it was, it was sort of in a tone that I'd written in a long time ago and, and I, I wanted to do again really and I could see that there was definitely a show here that excited me and I, and I you know, I felt that we could collaborate really well. So, so then we started this very, very odd process of knocking ideas back and forth. So you leave me very, very, very long WhatsApps. Mm. <laughs> like a podcast, mm. basically. Well, it's because I can't write. I can't, I can't send him a, an email. I'm like, umble like this, people go, oh, I'm just like the good world. Like, I'm like a chimpanzee. Like, I can't <laughs> do it. What I have got is bloody good ideas. I do. And uh, despite the fact I can't read or write, and you know what? From being a young kid, you, if you can't read and you can't write, from my generation, you're going to fucking struggle in life, is what they tell you, you know? And you are made to feel bloody stupid. And for years, I believed that. And only in the last sort of five or six years have I started to go, actually, no, you're not fucking stupid at all. Like, you've made some terrible decisions and continue to do so. <laughs> I mean... Big subject matter. Funny though. I mean, how easy is it to, to marry those things together and how important is that tone to, to making Brassic work? We're so broad sometimes and we're so sensitive at other times. You're thinking, God, is when you get that on the screen, is that going to be okay? Like, you know, stealing a little pony and, you know, <laughs> dicks, antique dicks and, you know, like, is that going to work? Are you going to be able to take that out there and those two things going to merge together? Because it isn't. You know, it isn't something that you see every day. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not got that sort of. Um, it's not just. The, it's not the norm. Is it? I mean, I don't think this show is like particularly ordinary. It's. It's. It's like something that completely stands out. And if it can make you cry and roar with laughter, then that's pretty good. It's a pretty good spot to be in. Joe has been very public about mm. his his own bipolar, and and I think it, we, we were we were quite worried at first about dealing with that in a sort of co comic environment. But in the end, you know, you said it, it was, it's like as long as we're truthful about it, we can be as funny, funny as we like. The scenes where he goes to see uh, Dr. Chris, Dominic West, are, are just ridiculous. Within those scenes, what we're doing actually is having our cake and eating it and going, we're, we're dealing with bipolar because everything Vinny's saying is truthful, but Chris is so kind of self-absorbed that you get the comedy out of it as well. So it's almost the negligence of Chris is almost a little bit of a comment on the system we work under and how we sort of we put everybody under these umbrellas, but one person's problems are always very different to the next, and, and that's the trouble with mental health. It's not a look at working class life that's bleak and depressing and all about aspiration and desperation. It's mm. so different to that, isn't it? It's really important. I feel like, I've, I, you know, the working classes, anything, anything, uh, any working class show that represents the working class is fucking miserable. And some of the happiest people I know are working class. Some of the smartest lads I know are working class. My opinion on it was I'm just sick to death of us being depicted as these, like, long suffering. I mean, sure, there's a bit of suffering goes on, and, and often it is hand to mouth. But that's not to say we're all fucking miserable. Like, you know, that's a middle-class view of what it is to be working class. 
there's these small towns all over the UK, like X million towns. And I thought that that's an underserved audience and microcosms that create these incredible characters that are absolutely worth talking about. And so there was a gap in the market and we fucking filled it. <laughs> <laughs> and how does it make you feel, Joe? It started as this kind of messy kind of thing in your head of all your experiences. Now it's this polished thing that everyone loves. It's one of Sky's biggest comedies. How does it make you feel to watch it? I'm not it? surprised by it. I, 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 I knew my idea was a good one. I, I knew that it was worth hearing. You know, I believed it would go on the TV. I'd say to them all the time, this will happen. I've got other ideas. They will happen. Like, absolutely they will. I believe in myself. For the first time in a lifetime, I know my own worth. Uh, and I, I'm not dumb. Like, I want more. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um.